Uh, first impression of me. Who? Nathan? Oh, I got you. Um, great. I mean, he's a willing learner. Uh, listens, communicates. Um, you know, we didn't do, he wasn't involved as much in some of our uh, stuff today. Um, but I've just gotten to know him a little bit. But, you know, the times we played against him, especially in Minnesota, he's had, like, good games against us because of his, his energy, his communication, his ability to, you know, offensive rebound. And uh, he can make an open shot. So anytime you have a guy like that kind of in your organization, it's good. Focus here the last couple of days, just amping up for Wednesday night for you with these practices. Yeah, just the balance of like worrying about our opponent, but also making sure uh, we're getting better at the things that we need to get better. Um, you know, obviously we have first couple games are going to be tough, but at the same time we have a journey that we're working on for the entire season. So just balancing kind of what we need to work on every day for us to grow as a team, and then where we need to focus on our um, personnel and, and scout specific stuff. Through kind of lineup by committee this year. What are you kind of looking at with these matchups? I guess for the Knicks specifically, a little bit of a bigger team. Do you tend to go bigger against those opponents or just kind of play your strengths like you did for a lot of last year? Um, both. I mean, it really just what's the strength of our roster, and the strength of our roster is to kind of go back and forth between big and small. A lot of the stuff, lineup stuff, will be what their second unit does, also. Um, you know, we don't know what team's going to do what they've done in the preseason, but you saw a little bit of double big in the second unit, and you didn't see as much as that from New York last year. So uh, that's something that we'll have to consider. But you know, I think the main thing is just all, all of us have to be open-minded and flexible to be able to take advantage of matchups on both sides of the floor. What gives us the best chance to win? Jason gave him a lot of credit for coming off the bench in that game against the Knicks. For him, he's been a star for a lot of his career. Him being willing to do that, come off the bench, is that kind of a conversation you and him have? Or is that just something that was a given? Uh, no, nothing's ever a given uh, with the players. Like, you have to have conversations, but I had conversations with all of them. And like I said, you know, Al's one of our culture warriors. He's one of, everything runs through him. Everything starts with him uh, as far as our organization, our locker room, and our team. At the same time, I said it the other night, this isn't an Al question. This isn't an Al versus a Drew question. This is everybody in the organization has to sacrifice. It just looks different for each person. Uh, and we're all going to have to do it at some point in time throughout the season. Joe, are you um, fluid in terms of starting lineups? Is that something that might change depending on matchups? Or is that something how you feel uh, I guarantee by like 20 or 30 games, you won't be asking anymore because we'll have so many different ones. Joe, when you have a group as versatile as this, does that allow you, is your approach to be like, let's put in more difficult stuff to take a board off or do you keep it simple and just have them execute better? In practice or like in the games? In both. Um, so I think in training camp, it was a huge balance of like, you know, here's things that we have to remain simple at. Here's things that you have to be better and like understanding there's flexibility at. And today we showed a clip. We had a timeout to burn in the preseason game at home versus New York with like 1.3 on the shot clock. And we call a timeout to run a play and they come back out in zone. And so like you have to understand if you're going to be in those situations, you have to have the play that we were going to have against man. But you have to be ready to make a read if they make an adjustment, you got to be ready to audible. And so like those are the areas where we leave a lot of flexibility and communication. It's like you got to be able to read the game because, you know, coaches are better, players are better, teams are better, philosophies are different. And um, you didn't see that a ton, uh, you know, five, ten years ago. And so there's certain non-negotiables and then there's certain things you got to be able to think of on the fly. You guys fully healthy at this point? Yep. Yep. How much of a, how big is that for you guys just entering the season knowing you know, lots of years you've yeah, I mean, I think this is, uh, you know, since I've been here, I think we come into the opening night with uh, the freshest we've been, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, and uh, as healthy as we've been. And, and, you know, we're really just focused on basketball and getting better every day. How important is it for your players, for you guys, to get to know veterans and develop chemistry off the floor? You, you personally do that, and they do that on their own. How do you kind of put I think it's more important for the veterans to get to know the young guys because they're the ones that are going to have to ask them to do things uh, for the betterment of our team throughout the season. So I think it's a two-way street. Um, but at the same time, it's like we got to get guys up to speed. We have to build trust. We have to build relationships because at the end of the day, everyone's going to be asked to do something that we need them to do. And uh, we got to make sure we, we trust the guy next to us. You spoke the other day about needing to have ways to win when your three isn't falling. Yeah. Um, how, how was that an issue last year, and when did you kind of recognize that last year? We didn't force turnovers, and we didn't, um, you know, get offensive rebounds. And so I recognized it the entire year. Yeah. Like, if you saw 80% of our box scores, we won the three-point margin, but we lost the shot margin. 
And we were able to make up for that because we were kind of a really skilled offensive team and we usually won the free throw margin because we didn't foul on the defensive end. Uh, but that's not a recipe for long-term success, um, you know, in the playoffs and on nights when it's not going well. And so, you know, I still think that we're going to take the best open shot possible, but I think we've gotten a lot better at how, what are ways we could force turnovers while keeping our defensive shell intact and then making sure we stress offensive rebounding and extra shot opportunities. How do you change the schemes to force more turnovers? Is it just being more aggressive, trapping more often? We've seen full court stuff mm -hmm. at times from you. What are the changes there that you guys need? Um, one, I think just being better individual defense. I think active hands, deflections, shift activity, just all the stuff that you work on, but you got to really work to emphasize the entire season regardless. And, and find ways to get better at it. I think it's also personnel based, like you said, um, in our full court pressure, knowing who we can pressure, who we can't pressure, and kind of situations like that. What do you like about the playoffs when it came to the analytics? Obviously, a smaller sample size when it comes to the three point shooting and stuff like that, but just in terms of how the game is different. Yeah. Once you do get to the playoffs. yeah, it's much tougher because the sample size is smaller. What, may, what might make sense? one night against a team in December might, might not make sense on game four, five, and six. And so finding that balance of what makes the most sense at the same time, what gives us the best chance to win in that moment. Um, and then again, like there's a difference uh, of level of execution and physicality that you have to have on the offensive end. And you got to be able to get to different things when they take away your first action, your second action, and sometimes your third action. <laughs> Oh, hope everyone's still healthy. <laughs> yeah, just another guy um, who comes in with, you know, he cares about the team, he cares about getting better. So he's a high character guy on and off the floor. Uh, he brings uh, championship level experience, which I think we're going to rely on as the season goes on. And uh, he's just willing to do whatever it takes to win. Joe, we have been asked this, but your, uh, have you named a captain and what you're thinking? Uh, we have 17 captains. Everyone's got a job to do. I hate giving captains because then it becomes about that one guy and what happens if he doesn't show up that one night. Uh, and so the ownership comes from every, everybody. And I think that's the main thing we focused on throughout uh, the preseason is like everyone plays a role in what their job is to, to make sure we're accountable, to make sure we're working hard, and to make sure we're doing the things that need to get done. So if you start getting into this guy's more important than this guy when it comes to accountability, uh, that's where I think guys waver off. And so we've really stressed everybody on the, in the locker room, you know, has a role in making sure we're accountable and we take ownership. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chef. Chef.